saying, don't use coax cable, only use ladder line. Coax cable has too much loss, wastes too much power. Well, that's kind of like saying, oh, don't use a modern solid state transceiver, only use an old vacuum tube transceiver. Now, it's true. A ladder line has much less loss than coax. But most hams don't use ladder line anymore, just like most hams don't use old tube gear anymore. Why not? Why don't most hams use ladder line? It works great, just like the old tube gear did. Its loss is so low, your SWR doesn't matter. Now, with coax, SWR might matter because it has higher loss. Let's examine why. Let's start with 600 ohm ladder line. You know, you can see why it's called ladder line. And you can buy these separators like you see here or make your own out of plastic plumbing pipe or something similar. Try making your own coax. Loss is extremely low because the dielectric separating the conductors is air, which is an excellent insulator. Here's an online coax loss calculator. And we're going to put in some 600 ohm ladder line, 100 feet. Let's use 20 meters, 14 megahertz, and a really high SWR of 10 to 1 uh, with 100 watts power. So let's see how much loss we have. Calculate. Total loss is 0.352 dB. That's less than a half of a decibel. I mean, think about that. You got 100 feet of ladder line, 14 megahertz, SWR of, of 10 to 1, and the loss caused by SWR, the SWR loss itself is point, uh, let's say 0 0.3, 0 0.3 dB. It is insignificant. Now let's compare that to some coax cable. Let's use RG213, a common coax. Everything else is the same. 100 feet, 14 megahertz, 10 to 1 SWR, 100 watts. Calculate. Look at the difference. Now our total loss is uh, 2.7 dB, almost half your power. So we can clearly see how that with ladder line, your SWR doesn't really matter. But in this case, with coax cable, RG213 is good coax, SWR does matter. Now, here's another type of ladder line you can buy at places like DX Engineering. It has a lower impedance and isn't as wide, but also has more loss than the previous 600 ohm example, but still less loss than typical coax. So, the superiority of ladder line when it comes to loss is clearly seen. So, why aren't we all using it? Well, it's difficult to use. It's not supposed to touch anything, especially metal, because ladder line isn't shielded. You have to route it around stuff so it's like, you know, floating in the air, supported by insulators. And if you don't, it won't be balanced anymore, and that means it'll radiate. See, with ladder line, the RF on one side cancels the RF on the other side. If that balance is upset, it radiates. Also, most antenna tuners are not designed to be used with ladder line. The output to the antenna is a coax connector. So you have to connect your ladder line to typically a 4 to 1 ballon with a short run of coax to the shack. Now here's how one guy does it. So here's 600 ohm ladder line connected to a hefty 4 to 1 ballon which allows you to use a short run of coax to the shack. Bal un, balanced to unbalanced. Ladder line is balanced. Coax is unbalanced. Also, this balanced impedance ratio is 4 to 1 from the line to the coax to make it easier for the tuner or transmatch to get a good match. Now, some tuners have a built-in ballon, but many hams prefer external ballons. Some hams complain that they have burned up the ballon in their tuner, which shows it was underrated, or the ham was careless putting a kilowatt into a 100-watt tuner. 
Now, with coax, none of this really matters. You can run it like you would house wiring. You can even bury it as long as the insulation is rated for that. Coax is shielded. Shielded cable does not radiate. However, not everything is so carefree with coax cable. Coax will radiate if your antenna is not balanced or a dipole with no RF choke to block common mode current, which causes RF in the shack problems. Now, what is common mode current? You can think of coax as actually being three conductors. One, the center conductor. Two, the inner part of the shield. And three, the outer part of the shield. Why? Because RF current only flows in the surface of a conductor. So separate currents can flow on the inner and outer shield. Yeah, RF's weird like that. It's that current on the outer shield you want to avoid. You can do that with an RF choke like this one. Or this one. They all do the same thing. The ferrite material blocks RF common mode current. These chokes are often called balans. I don't know why. It's confusing. Now, what about this idea that you should not use coax because it has too much loss? Now, in our previous example, 100 feet of RG213 with an SWR of 10 to 1 and 20 meters eats up about half your power. So, yeah, you need to get a lower SWR than if you were using ladder line. But now let's try something different. Instead of an SWR of 10 to 1, still we have uh, RG213, 100 feet, 14 megahertz, Let's try 5 to 1. Let's drop it in half and see what a difference that makes. Calculate. All right, now our total loss is only about 1.5 dB. So not nearly as bad. You're not losing half your power compared to a 10 to 1 SWR. Now let's put this into perspective. Let's say with RG213, your SWR is 10 to 1 on 80 meters instead of 20. Let's see what happens. We're going to change the frequency to 3.5 megahertz. And we're going to, again, go back to an SWR of 10 to 1. Calculate. Well, now we see the total loss is only about 1.5 dB. So we see that transmission line loss is highly dependent on frequency. The higher the frequency, the more loss. Let's look at this power loss another way. Let's say you're having a QSO with another ham. You're running 100 watts, but your power suddenly drops by half to 50 watts. That is only one half of an S unit. Would the other operator even notice that your power dropped by half? Probably not. So it really doesn't matter. However, I acknowledge that losing half your power in the line messes with your head and you would want to fix that. So, summing it all up, coax is pretty much like using ladder line with more loss, but a lot easier to deploy. If you have reasonable levels of SWR when using coax, don't worry about it. Just use a tuner and make good use of balance and RF chokes to avoid RF in the shack problems. And don't worry about RG213, for example, melting with a combination of high power and a high SWR. Walt Maxwell, W2DU, says this. He says RG8 type cables can be operated with a substantial mismatch at legal power limits without worries. Do the math. You'll see that he's right again. Or how about this? Don't use coax or ladder line. Just connect a long wire directly to your tuner and run it out the window. That's what a lot of hams used to do. 
This idea that we need a transmission line that does not radiate came along later, and we call that progress. And back to the old tube-type transmitters and transceivers, you could load those things up with a 5-to-1 SWR and no problem. Tubes can take a beating. Try that with your modern solid-state transceiver. You'll be shipping it along with your wallet to an ICOM or Yesu service center, and you will be QRT until it's fixed. Consider subscribing to this channel in 73.